Um, so when Nat sent the question through, I sort of wondered if it was a bit of a trick question because would I rather see someone being born or see them being killed? Um, so going on that sort of basis, um, I would definitely much prefer to have seen Jesus' birth than the crucifixion. Um, I'm not sure if that's just sort of like what everybody would say. Um, and I'm sorry if it's just a bit of a general sort of answer. Um, but I don't know why you would choose to see someone die, especially if you sort of knew that you were sort of part of the reason as to why they were being crucified. So yeah, I definitely much prefer to have seen Jesus being born. What a joyous celebration that would have been. So for me, I would definitely prefer to witness the birth of Jesus over the crucifixion. I don't think I could handle the crucifixion at all. Um, and being a mom, I've had the privilege of watching um, new life come into the world, which is an absolutely amazing experience. So to be able to witness the birth of Jesus Christ himself would be just amazing. So for me, yeah, definitely the birth of Jesus. Hi, I'm Natalie, and welcome to Legacy Church Walsall Youth Fellowship. Hello, and I'm Sal. Good to see you again. Now this week, we're starting a brand new series, all about the Acts of the Apostles. And today, we're going to talk about one in particular called Peter. Now, do you remember him? I think so. Did he walk on water? He did. He also chopped off a soldier's ear, and he denied Jesus Christ three times. Wow, well, let's find out all about his story then. Here's our good friend Elaine to share a bit more. Maria. She'd never travelled on an aeroplane before, so before her first ever flight to beat her fear, she took to the sky on a roller coaster. That beginning with tequila! <laughs> that chickadee! That's <laughs> really nice, been the one for roller coasters really I don't really like them but I can certainly relate to how life is like a roller coaster sometimes you've got those highs and sometimes you've got those lows and the same can be said of the Christian life too the Christian walk with God we can have those mountain top times and those deep valleys too and everything in between today we're going to have a look at Peter and how his life was a roller coaster. Can you remember that time when Jesus sent the disciples off in a boat and he said, I'll join you later. And the wind started to blow and the waves were tossing the boat. And Jesus walked out towards the boat on the water and the disciples were afraid. And he says, don't, don't be frightened, it's me. And Peter says, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. That must have been a high. He must have had great faith to think, if Jesus says I can walk on the water, I can walk on the water, because that is surely, in human terms, that's an impossibility. But Jesus said, come on then. So he got out of the boat. Great faith again. That high has just got even higher, because it's not just believing that he can do it, he's actually doing it. He gets out of that boat and starts to walk on the water. But then what happens? He starts to sink. 
And what turned that high into that low of sinking in the water? He took his eyes off Jesus. When Jesus said, come, he stepped out of that boat. His eyes were on him. He was walking on water. As soon as he looked around and saw the waves and the wind, he started to get fearful. Took his eyes off Jesus, started to sink. So that high turned into the low in a matter of seconds, maybe. What about the time in Gethsemane? Jesus, before his trial, he knew this was coming. He went to Gethsemane to pray. He took his disciples with him. And then he left most of the disciples and he just took three of them further on to pray. And one of those was Peter. And then he said, you stay here to pray. I'm going to pray by myself for a bit. So off he goes. Peter's one of those who has come even closer with Jesus. But when Jesus comes back to those three disciples, three separate times, what are they doing? They've gone to sleep. So that high of being called into Jesus's close companions to pray with him, that high there falls asleep, plummeting down to a low. Three times that happened. And then when the soldiers actually come to arrest Jesus, what does Peter do? Brash, impulsive piece, Peter. He stands up for his Lord, cuts off the ear of one of the soldiers. Yeah, looking after his Lord. Perhaps he thought that was a high, but what does Jesus do? Rebuke him, plummeting low again. But maybe the one thing that we can all think of when we think of Peter is when Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times before I die. And, and he said, no, I am never going to do that. But he did three times. I never knew him. Low. No, I never knew him. Low. Absolutely not. I never knew him. Low. Hit rock bottom. Because at that point, the cock crowed. He realised what he'd done. He'd said, Peter wept bitterly. After the resurrection and Jesus met the ladies at the tomb, he told them, go and tell the disciples that I'm alive. And he specifically named Peter. It's as if he knew how rock bottom Peter had got to when he, after denying him and realising what he'd done. He wanted to tell Peter, this is all real, Peter, I'm alive. Everything's happened just as I said it would. Since we're looking in this study at people in Acts, it seems funny that all I've done is spoke about the Gospels. But I wanted you to know that Peter was never a perfect person. He had his flaws. He was very enthusiastic in his faith about following Jesus, about being a disciple, but he often stumbled. But Jesus knew, he knew all of that about Peter. And Jesus wants real people, real people like Peter, real people like me and you. And I, I saw a quote on the internet, I thought, I like that. It's not nothing Christian, but I thought, I like it. It's better to be a follower who fails than one who fails to follow. Reminded me of Peter. So let's turn to Acts. Now, I know you know about Pentecost because you've been doing that in your studies. But after that Holy Spirit fell on all the people in the upper room, Peter was the main speaker to the crowds. Great, powerful message. And in verse 41 of Acts chapter 2, we read about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000. And remember, it's not been long since Peter had denied the Lord three times. In Acts chapter 3, we read that, we read that Peter healed the lame beggar. In Acts chapter 4, he preached boldly before the Sanhedrin. With all the other apostles, we can read in Acts that through their preaching and actions, numbers were added to daily. More and more were added to their number. Numbers of believers was increasing. Sometimes the crowds were so great that all people wanted to do was for Peter's shadow to fall on their sick friends. So they took their sick friends and just put them in 
next to the path where Peter would walk in the hope that his shadow would fall on them and heal them. In Acts chapter 5 we read about beatings, arrests, Peter being jailed and threatened and still they preached. And in addition to all of this that they were doing, Peter knew Mark and he gave information to Mark for the gospel that he wrote. And Peter also wrote the two letters, 1 and 2 Peter. So what can we learn from Peter's life? We can overcome fear with courage. Think about when he walked on the water. But don't take our eyes off Jesus. Jesus forgives unfaithfulness. You could say that Peter was unfaithful to God in that he denied him three times. But Jesus restored him. Jesus will continue to patiently teach us. And he does. Jesus chooses unlikely heroes. Peter was an unlikely hero, so am I, so are you, but we can still work for God. He can still work through us and with us. And the thing that really hits home for me is that Jesus sees us as he intends us to be. Jesus called Peter the rock. His name was Simon, but he says, Simon, I'm going to call you Peter, which means the rock. And he said, an un you, on you, Peter, I'm going to build my church, that rock. Meaning that Peter was going to be really instrumental in uh, establishing the, the early church. And he did. So Jesus saw him in that future role right at the very beginning. So how does Jesus see us? He sees us as unique and loved and special. He sees us as his family. He sees us as strong and important. Read the scriptures and see how Jesus sees you. Maybe you could have a look at Peter's life in the Gospels and Acts and see if you can map out his highs and his lows. Maybe you could do the same for your own life. Maybe you could read 1 and 2 Peter with some insight of knowing the sort of character that Peter was and how he wrote that gospel. Anyway, see you next time. Wow, what a character Peter was. Um, he certainly wasn't by any means perfect, was he? And yet we tend to see people in the Bible that we read about and um, learn from as these perfect godly people. Um, and I think it was good to hear that actually he wasn't perfect. No. Um, and that he made mistakes, he messed up, but that he starts all over because God forgives us. That's right. And I'm so glad that he wasn't perfect because I know I'm not perfect. Yeah. And I make mistakes. But as long as I keep trying, that's all that Jesus wants. He yeah. wants us to try our best. That's true. And and as Elaine has said, he, he forgives our unfaithfulness just as Peter had been unfaithful when he denied Christ. Um, we can also be unfaithful in our, our deeds and our words and even in our thoughts because it is best to follow and fail than to not follow at all. So let's pray that we will be followers. You know, we've, we've learnt all about um, Pentecost and having the Holy Spirit and, you know, moving on from there, it's our lives now as disciples and what does that mean and how how do we follow what... Um, Christ did what the apostles did and and how do we follow after him and try to be like him so yeah that's our prayer
for yeah. you this week. Yeah, and remember, it, it's more important to follow Jesus. You don't have to be perfect. That's true. You can be like Peter. You can be, a, you know, a trier. Yeah. Jesus loves a trier. Yeah, it's very true. So we'll see you all next time. Yeah, see you then. Bye. Bye-bye.